elegance of an unharried life. Have you known it? Or do you find yourself in a never-ending list of things you must do and wishing you can take a breather for a while? You can. Are you taking care of so many people and your own need comes last many times? I understand. I've been there too. But I don't neglect my own needs anymore. Are you always busy because you feel you must always be doing something to feel successful or relevant? Or otherwise be regarded as lazy or no ambitions in life? I get it. There was a season in my life I thought the same thing. What if I tell you a life that is the opposite of overwhelm, burnout, or self-neglect is possible? Are you curious how one can create such a life? I'm not talking about a new trend. I'm talking about slow living. Mindful living and the elegance of it all. For the purposes of being clear, I'd like to define what I mean when I say slow living. My definition and my ways may be different from others, and rightly so. For me, slow living is simply a way of life where you're intentional and mindful. For me, slow living is simply a way of life where you're intentional and mindful to be consistent with what you value most important. It is a mindset which allows you to be more self-aware and gives you the freedom to accomplish things based on your own determinations and not by what the society or others have defined for you. It gives you permission to live your life how you want to live it, with diligent care for your own benefits, without disregard to the welfare of others. There's no formula for slow living. It's not dependent on whether you live in the city or the countryside. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, or what work you do. However, being mindful and intentional about how you spend your time and on what determines whether you're living it or not. Slow living is not about simply doing things slowly, or living in the boondocks without technology or being lazy without ambitions, it can be quite the opposite. It's not about doing less, but doing things that matter better. Slow living helps me create the time to make meaningful connections with people, with nature, and my own body and mind, and most especially with God. For me, it is living my life at a pace that allows me to be really present in the moment without unnecessary distractions that can keep me from being with the people I care most and from doing things which matter to me greatly. It is about enjoying the simple pleasures in life. Like spending time in our garden whenever I can. 
watching my son's game or enjoying my husband teach my son some skills. Slow living for me is taking the time to look at the skies and witness the start of a new day or catching the last colors of a fading sunset. being caught in the wonders of how seasons flow into one another. Or simply enjoying a meal with my family. These actions may seem simple to some, but the truth is, this kind of actions take intentionality on my part. And it only happens because I choose not to be in so many places in a day, jumping from one commitment to the other. Introspective as a child, I was naturally predisposed to slow reliving and inclined for quiet. But somehow, somewhere down the road of adulthood, I felt somewhat thrust in a fast-paced life rushing to go somewhere I wasn't always sure of where. I just went with a crowd and matched the pace of many around me. Thankfully, God grabbed a hold of my heart and He made me realize that life is not a race, but I have a destination to pursue, and that is to be with Him in eternity. God taught me to dispense with a lie that I must keep up with the relentless demands of modern life to remain effective. Filling my days with so much business does not equate to being relevant or that I may miss out on life. In the fast-paced, media-saturated world that we live in, I think we can miss the quiet and, and understand the beauty of nature which is ever present around us. We are bombarded daily with limitless and never-ending media visuals and incessant commercial noise. Slow living affords me peace and harmony with myself and those near me. This broken but beautiful world has so much to offer us in terms of beauty and joy. We only have to take the time to slow down a bit or a lot, depending on your life circumstances. Catching the magnificent colors of the skies The first sip of your favorite drink in the morning. Touching the petals of the flowers in the garden. Listening to the birds at dusk before they retire to the trees. Taking a warm bath or long showers. or simply enjoying the quiet rhythm of your home. These are just some of the ways we can slow down. Savoring the ordinary moments of our day-to-day -day lives is a great way to turn what seems like mundane into extraordinary. But it's only possible when we are present in the moment. And that usually means slowing down and taking note of the wonders of the simple day becomes special, even magical. Life is so short and fleeting. Open your eyes and ears and most of all your heart and catch the beauty of a moment as it unfolds. Extraordinary happens when you're present to witness it, 
both in the small and grand moments of life. Slow down and catch it. The smallest details usually present the most ordinary magic and are what lasting memories are made of. Therefore, enjoy the here and now. There is romance in life, and we have the ability to always create it. Not in the sense of escapism, although there is also a time for that as well. Romanticizing life does not mean you don't see reality. It is quite the opposite. You see life for what it truly is. Many times it's messy, broken, complicated, hard. Yet you seek the beauty and good in it. In the grand scheme of things, everything, even the toughest times in our lives, always serve a good according to God's plan. There is always a beautiful purpose. We just need to be humble and open to see it. When we slow down our life enough, this truth comes to us in the most profound way, enough for us to consider living our life in a different pace than what we're accustomed to. Slow down enough to ponder what's real, what's true and good, lovely and admirable. And these are usually not found in material things. What we possess materially does not define who we are. None of it is actually ours anyway. Focus instead on who you are and what you already have that can make a meaningful difference in your day and in others. Life doesn't have to be frantic and exacting all the time. Find those opportunities where you can slow down some aspects of your life. Stop living your life in autopilot. Be mindful of those moments when you feel most alive, most real, and most connected to people and things that are important to you. Time is both fluid and stagnant. What you do with it is entirely your choice. A simple life is a beautiful life when it's crafted with intentionality and purpose based on your own needs and values within the time you've determined. for an elegant life worth pursuing. Step back, slow down, and look at your life honestly. Are you living a life that's consistent with who you are and the values that are most important to you? Thank you for exploring this viewpoint with me today. I hope that you find the elegance of living the unharried life or the best life you can find for yourself that makes you so grateful you are thriving and alive. A simple life that is so rich in purpose and meaning. My life is not perfect, but I'm looking forward to living the best magic in it, one slow day at a time. I wish you the best in finding the best life for you. This is Liberty 
your friend and host here at Timeless Elegance, Ageless Beauty. Join me again for another look at finding elegance and beauty in our daily lives.